Dark Souls 3's second and final piece of DLC, The Ringed City, has launched. And it is just as punishing and horrible as we've come to expect from anything Dark Souls. Why do we keep willingly doing this to ourselves? Well, we've had a good look at the Ringed City and met pretty much everyone that lives there. And in response, here are seven of the biggest bullies you'll encounter. Spoiler warning for bosses and tactics ahead. The angels you'll encounter in the drag heap just shouldn't be allowed to be this annoying. They'll arrive at an area and hover above it, attacking the second they lay eyes on you. They unleash a volley of light arrows that can kill in seconds, force you behind cover and stop you from properly exploring. And even when they don't have line of sight, they can initiate an area of effect spell that will curse you if you stay still for too long. They're a massive pain in the ass, essentially. The good news is that once you find and crush their grounded alter ego, a gross scrub-like thing, they'll die and stay dead, allowing you to go back and hoover up all the items you missed before. Where's your god now, angels? The first proper boss you'll encounter in the Ring City DLC is a special offer, three for the price of one. Taking a plunge off the drag heap will bring you down to meet the demon in pain and the demon from below. One hits hard with fire, the other has toxicity building attacks and projectiles. Once you get rid of one, the fight becomes that much easier, but then killing the last one left standing will cause it to morph into the explosive Demon Prince. This fight can be a tricky one given how aggressive all three forms are, but luckily if you want and you're embered, you can call in multiple reinforcements to make things much, much easier. You'll need to have met NPC Lap twice before getting to the fight, once across the broken tower past the two knights you'll encounter here, and then again near the Earth and Ruins bonfire. Mostly though, although you might get horribly ganged up on to begin with, this fight just looks a lot more intimidating than it actually is. How about that finisher, though? This giant can definitely do one, and he can also certainly take you unawares the first time you encounter him. This guy summons a battalion of ghostly archers to fire on you as you step into the Ringed City, and taking refuge among the gravestones is probably the safest way to progress. You can hop across and up a ladder to get a little closer, and then leg it up the stairs towards this dickhead sitting on his chair, making your life miserable. When you're in melee range of him, he can still summon archers, but he also has a tendency to tag in a couple of close-range heavy hitters, so don't be afraid to do some rolling. When you're under his feet, he can also do some pretty damaging slams and swipes with his hands, so be careful and keep moving. You'll encounter another giant in the swamps a bit later. He'll perform pretty much the same moves, but it's a bit easier as you'll have a lot more space to move around. Just keep rolling and you should be fine. Not far from the giant in the swamp, you can find a dragon slayer who, while an optional sub-boss, carries an armor set that you might be interested in picking up from his cold, dead hands. The dragon slayer is an angry individual who is armed to the teeth, but if you're fairly nimble, you shouldn't have too much of a problem, even if you do feel pretty victimized by how heavily armed and heavily armored he is. Keep your guard up or he'll pound you into a fine, lightningy dust before you can blink. This next boss fight is an interesting one, and an annoying one. When you enter the boss arena, you'll be met by Judicator Argo, another of those towering giant guys. While you can attack him straight away, it's kind of a waste of time and potential Estus flasks. Instead, wait for him to summon this person in the middle of the room. If you position yourself just right, you'll be able to get a cheeky backstab in. Argo will die when this attacker falls. After a certain amount of time, the real boss of the arena will appear, and that will either be an NPC called Half-Light, 
or it will be another player, a member of the Spears of the Church Covenant. If you were quick, you might have already killed that initial NPC before Half-Light appears, but if you didn't, finish them off as quickly as possible or they'll heal their ally. Attacking with orbs, lightning spears and deadly flurries, Half-Light is a severe annoyance. And you're best using the pillars for Estus breathers and for backing off when they're in this stance. As for other players, well, best of luck. When their health is down to about half, another annoying flippy healer will be summoned. Finish them off again as quickly as possible and you can just concentrate on the spear. Just be patient, don't get greedy with your swings and you should be fine. What kind of asshole uses swords and shields and bows and orbs and spears and is invincible while rolling? This asshole, so unfair. One of the oldest tricks in the Souls Handbook is to fling a dirty great big dragon at you while you're minding your own business crossing a bridge. Thankfully, you can have your own back on this dragon further on up the mountain, right after a well-placed bonfire. Dark Eater Medir, as his cuddly name suggests, is a delightful combination of fire spitting and claw swiping. But provided you get in close to the right claw, keep your shield up and mind the cliff edge, he's not too much of a challenge. At least until his health gets a little low and he flips out and has a hissy fit, slashing and spewing flames in every direction. Run away and wait for that to subside and then just head back in and finish him off. He'll often tucker himself out with this tantrum as well, allowing you to just hack away until he falls off the cliff. Now, you'd think that that was far too easy a fight to kill off a dragon, and you'd be right. He isn't dead. Head to this bonfire, go down the elevator, roll onto that midway platform, hack here to reveal an illusory wall, climb down the ladder, head through the chapel and fall down the hole to find where Medir tumbled off to. Now, this is a real dragon fight, and it is not easy, so come prepared with a super hard-hitting weapon, as his defense is ridiculous, and be ready to roll out of the way of so many fatal tail swipes. You'll need to defeat Medir to join the Spears of the Church Covenant and be summoned as part of that earlier boss battle, but really, defeating this absolute bully will be all the reward we need. Speaking of bullies, here's the worst one. Just when you think he's reached peak bully, he goes one further with not one, not two, but three phases, each one meaner than the last. As always with ultra-aggressive bosses, keep rolling, 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 but don't get cocky or he will cut you down in seconds. If you think he looks familiar, by the way, Gale was the NPC that opened the path to the last piece of Dark Souls 3 DLC, the painted world of Ariandel guess he's not so friendly anymore, especially when he starts throwing out boomerang-like flashes of energy, erupting in homing fireballs, and calling down area-wide lightning strikes. Go all the way to Hell Gale, and preferably, stay there. So, those are the enemies that gave me the most trouble in the Ring City, but what do you think? Any that I've missed? Or do you have any Dark Souls 3 war stories that you'd like to share? Let us know and as always, do give us a like and a subscribe if you enjoyed this video. That'd be lovely. Bye!